Yes, yes. Sorry. Um, yeah, I'm very glad to uh, see the Annette and the Jan presentation. Uh, no, drawing is very uh, strong uh, um, materials for, for us to like, as a communication. This is uh, my uh, strong uh, um, intention of why I'm a draw. So, and uh, <clears throat> my last over 20, 30 years, we are uh, practice almost. So, <laughs> but uh, that case, we always try to make a drawings uh, to uh, to address our uh, environment as an embodiment, but same times also like uh, to share this idea or what I noticed about the environment to share the other people, not only for architecture specialists, more than uh, including the uh, public or normal or my 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 mother or my, my <laughs> grandmother or something like that, more communication to, to what I know. And then uh, this idea was coming also the recent uh, the public drawing project. Oh, yeah. Um, can you advance the next one? This yes. No, both, both is oh, a public uh, yeah, drawing yeah. project. It, uh, we started to 2011, so after... Uh, when Japan had a very big earthquake at the moment, and after, so we were last, before maybe around 1990 to 2010 around, so we started to use computer drawing as a professional. So. And the first part, maybe computer using, it's cool, no? <laughs> it's a very simple line that everybody can share easily by, as a tools. That's very cool, but uh, 2011, we could not uh, draw by computer, unfortunately. It, I was uh, very shocked by a uh, shaking earth, and also a lot of um, buildings were damaged by tsunami. So that's why so I really um, hesitate to start to make some proposal by computer. And then uh, we tried to recover, so yeah, uh, what is our profession and what is our role? Uh, through the hand drawings. Mm. The hand drawing is also very uh, important uh, kind of encouragement for us, what we saw and what we tried to propose. So it's like a loop between our body and thinking. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's kind of, uh, you know, like a, uh, medi almost meditation. And also like in Japan or maybe China, so we have also some method of the Buddhism as a script, writing right and left just to make a copy by hand. So this is also kind of um, interesting training for thinking. But uh, we also fascinated something like that, so by hand drawing. So that's why so we started to propose some idea to fisherman village who lost a village or building so to, to the future, so by hand drawing. And then after, so, but uh, this drawing was done by several students, um, including us. So that's why, so why not the drawing could be more open, not only for by special master, so more than more general uh, platform. So that idea comes the uh, public drawing idea. And the one large board, a paper, well, I think Jan did already, like, uh, it's very beautiful, but same as our spirit also, like, uh, how we can share the drawing and how we can communicate through the uh, process of the drawing. So, for example, public drawings focusing on the public space, and not only personal spaces. So that's why, so, for example, oh, the square, which people gathering, and how they are costumed, and uh, what they are doing. So this uh, process is coming from the observation, but also the proposal or predict to the future. So that's why so, uh, we did uh, several um, workshops in the uh, last 10 years, mm -hmm. and uh, it was nine, 2018, so we started to also working with uh, Veduta uh, in Venice, mm -hmm. because uh, historical uh, drawing uh, in Central Europe or Europe so has uh, many Veduta drawings are from the uh, 16th, 17th century. So, because uh, the, it's, uh, people started to traveling a lot mm. in uh, uh, between the Europe countries, so 
uh, grand tourism or uh, yeah, other lot of good data coming into the Venice. So that's why so we started to also engage the historical drawing and today's situation to compare what's happened, difference. For example, uh, traditional Venice uh, Square was used as a ceremony of the richness or power of the <laughs> merchant originally in the Toyota, but nowadays uh, many uh, tourism from Japan and China, <laughs> also they over uh, covering the entire plaza to waiting for some uh, climbing up the tower and so on. So that's that's a totally different uh, line. So by crowds, so which were uh, located in the Veduta and today. So that's mm -hmm. that's quite an uh, interesting um, observation by uh, drawings, but same time so understanding today's situation. So maybe like uh, through this uh, historical Veduta, I also thought maybe uh, this is also nice to think about the, how the society was transformed from historical moment to today's because the last um, 19th century, 20th century, up to today, 21st century. So the transformation of the city or industrialization or modernity is changed to our lifestyle. So, so that's why So, if we could get some uh, input from the historical perspective mm -hmm. to our mind, so we can also much larger um, territory to, of the knowledge and thinking uh, to input to finding our better solutions mm -hmm. by the drawings. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So these have been fantastic. I'm so thrilled that all of you were willing to come and share some aspects of your approach. I have some few, a few questions that um, come out of my own experience, somewhat, uh, that I've somewhat fallen into uh, as an architectural historian, but observing um, in my own classes that students, um, this is, may be less true at ETH, but it's been true in my professional experience that students very often don't have the habit of drawing. So they don't, they don't do, take it up naturally. It has to be a little bit encouraged. And so I've started uh, introducing drawing as an aspect of my history classes. Um, but I, I come across a number of um, kind of points of resistance, I would say, from the students. And I'm curious about how you approach these. So one, I mean, Jan, one thing that I really admired about your presentation and found so encouraging and interesting is that it is clearly, like it's clearly something that you're doing absolutely constantly and, and you're trying to encourage the students to do that well. 3,000 drawings for one semester is a lot of drawings. <laughs> um, but is that the way, is it by practice or is there other ways that, that you or others um, get students over what I find to be a real internal barrier, which is that for architecture students, which is that they, one, feel like they can't draw, like a lot of them come in to, to architecture school feeling like they should be able to draw, speaking of the public, maybe their parents or, or neighbors feel like if you're an architect student, you should be able to draw, so they can't draw, and they often feel like their drawing should be beautiful, um, that they should look great, like immediately. Uh, that was another thing that I like about you know, the drawings you showed is like, you know, a lot of them are like very quick and you're just turning the pages. Um, and so one thing that I think is especially at this semester, I'm teaching a course called What Drawings Did and Do and we're focusing on observational drawing. And and I'm trying to get them to say, okay, if you if you, are looking out at this room and trying to draw this room, you shouldn't be looking at your paper. You should be focusing on what are what can you see there. But it, it's still, there are so many kind of internal um, issues that I see that the students have and preconceptions about what they should be doing. So I'm curious to hear what, um, either in having taking them to the forest or in Think, making them focus about communication or in just encouraging this volume of drawing, how do you kind of overcome some of those notions and, that, and maybe hang-ups that the students arrive with? Mm. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think, uh, yes, uh, no, 
for example, public drawing, we ask them to uh, pencil drawing, so mm -hmm. because it's easy to erase, but they don't like it. So, so a failure, and also like uh, they can communicate. And also, I like the Yan's drawing, for example, like uh, he's you suddenly saw fog coming to over your mountain, so it's <laughs> hiding your sketches. So that I think. Uh, you know, like, um, maybe so your point, I think um, uh, drawing is maybe process of the times and the layering, and it's not, should be the end. So mm, my point, right. and also the architecture and our society and the young shows also several, yeah, occupation by, by the space, by drawing on the real so occupation, but parallel goes on. So that, that kind of things, it's also the drawing is part of the life and the continuous part. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, I think maybe uh, some, uh, some moment we should uh, stop to have a look. <laughs> But uh, I think, you, uh, yeah, of course we can continue, so if we like. So, but I think uh, maybe school or some moment, everybody want to have a stop to watch. So mm -hmm. that, that format a little bit just stressful. And then I think also the, now the computer, one hand is a student very like to computer because it's very easy to back, 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 or, right, or right. make a many, um, Regist, no, I don't know, record and register, so mm. to multiply and so on. So, but, but I think hands is also uh, could be, but same time also hands what we also uh, interesting effect compare from the computer. It's also we should uh, have another moment of the decision. For example, like a computer, sometimes we can make a little bit delay that making the decision. So, but well, as architecture thinks, but. Uh, I think hand is we have to start at, at least one line so to somewhere in the white things. So, so the decision making a bit earlier so mm. than other media and uh, that might be helps to students to take account so in the uh, design process. I mean certainly I think the emphasis saying this is about the process may like be engaged in the process and then only later are you <laughs> kind of allowed to step back and see what you did is very interesting. But it's also interesting, this, um, the implications of material choices, mm. right? So what you said about erasing um, is, is so significant. Of course, if you're erasing a pencil drawing, certainly if you're trying to rub out a chalk drawing, um, you're going to leave some traces. And so, so there's some kind of like mm -hmm. memory of in the page of what came before, even if they're rubbing it out. I thought it was interesting, um, Jan, that you were making all your drawings that I can remember, or maybe I think all of them are pen, the ones that you're doing in your notebooks. Okay, maybe there were some. But so I'm curious with that, do you, is it, with your students, do you deliberately want them to use pen because there isn't the possibility of erasure or you leave it to them? How do you work with those? Oh yeah, you may have to. Yeah, okay. Um, first of all is that um, throughout the years in the studio, well, when we started doing this, was it now 10 or 15 years ago? Well, we, we always did this, but I mean, starting as a teacher, uh, you know, we, we all at a certain age started to talk, and then later we started to write, and in fact, in between, or maybe ahead of that, we started to draw as a child. Mm. And seemingly that got then somewhere lost, because it's mostly in the class there are only two uh, children that can draw, and mm -hmm. the teacher says fantastic, and the others then stop doing it. <laughs> but okay, <laughs> that's maybe not the point. The point is that uh, we always um, broadcast and, and radiate to students that there is no one who cannot draw, and I've, so far I haven't met any student that cannot draw. The point is, of course, that uh, if I talk about three to 6,000, we never ask. But they are almost, at the beginning, hidden 
in their little booklets here and there. So when they come to studio, they always think they have to make a presentational drawing every week. And to pro somehow they have. Mm. But then often when we see that things don't move on, we ask, do you have your sketchbook with you? Mm. Can we have a look if there are no private notes in it? Can we go through it and so mm. on? So in the beginning, we start to, to establish as fast as possible uh, a, a feeling of confidence mm -hmm. because drawing seems to make people shy. Mm. at a certain moment Completely. and uh, creating this confidence happens of course you learn to teach also throughout the years and I would say that today um, however we have all explicitly this documentation and uh, also our communication in a certain way we don't communicate it anymore in the studio mm. it happens mm. So seemingly the studio is felt as a free space where people can collect or can experience for a semester this kind of uh, work. So in a certain way today we don't set out anymore any, uh, how to say, instruction how to draw. And um, to be not with a mistake, there is no uh, limit from to digital or whatever. Mm. But as we don't say exactly, well, we have... We have our outcomes we expect, but as we don't say exactly that it should be this or that, we are confronted with, and that's very interesting in teaching also, with a, a gigantic variety of approaches. Mm. Uh, also for me or for the teaching team, this is extremely interesting to, to l still learn from young people different ways of how to work with pencil, paint, how they then often combine digital in it, whether it's a background or whether it comes to the front or an alternative way of working with it. And seemingly for students, this, this, the, the nice thing also is for them, because I have to say, we, we all take care about about what we demand on one hand in a studio and what also is the outcome of a studio, we, we often have to calm them down uh, mm -hmm. because uh, what do they experience by it is that it becomes like thinking and speaking and writing. It becomes a very evident thing. Mm. There is no other interface between you and the pencil than your arm to your head. And that's very revealing for students that finally they learn to practice their thinking to be projected mm. into a documentation, not only by writing. Like, for example, in writing, another exercise we, we ask them there is not to make descriptions of their project, but to make a part, a chapter of a, no of a novel that happens in their project. Mm. So different than, than that, but that's now uh, aside. So uh, what, what, I, where, what I wanted to, to go to is that um, it's a revealing moment and students at many times come back and say at the end of the semester, we worked like hell, but we are not tired or we are differently tired. Because uh, an upcoming semester to the end is a digitalization, often. Mm, mm. And then they spend for rendering and everything the last two, three weeks, for day and night, for a screen that's constantly sending blue light to them right. that they don't know. Uh, uh, so they said, like, this is even physically and mentally, in that sense, fresh to be also till the end change and even arrive to the end of a semester with a decent fatigue mm -hmm. and not with a totally exhausted uh, mm. fatigue. And I think that's to me uh, quite interesting and, and maybe I should have shown of the practice many digital work we do, mm. uh, but it's, it's fascinating that there is still a very important balance possible, even in, like I showed in presentation and talking with clients like the large drawing is also an instrument to talk with the city and to understand what the project, which is actually on building site, which they are realizing right now, how you even at that moment you can interfere with the drawing in a debate with the society, mm -hmm. with, with the people around. So it's, it's, there is no dogma on digital analog, even we don't speak it out in that sense. Uh, but we, we try to create also, like in my practice, uh, I would not say a safe heaven, but a safe place where everyone immediately can explore her or his uh, ways of getting something that comes close to you, like talking and writing mm. and reading mm. and thinking and drinking and drawing. I mean, what you're describing is very interesting, is it's kind of a, a culture of a studio in yeah. which these 
particular hang-ups that I was describing, and I didn't even mention the one about the secret drawing. But that's also something I've observed, is that the students who draw, you know, they just kind of, like, it's very hard to yeah. get it out of them, so overcoming that. Um, and also something that you said, which I think is very encouraging and interesting, uh, it was one of, when I, I, you know, I'm trained as an art historian, so I view architecture kind of from a sociological point of view as an outsider. And one of my first observations going to studio reviews early in my career was that all of these different students were presenting work that looked um, eerily similar and, and often had this kind of aesthetic that was either dictated or implicitly just imitating mm -hmm. the instructor. Um, so I think to overcome that is <laughs> in itself yeah. an uh, impressive yeah. accomplishment. Yeah. It's, I, but, it, but it sounds I, like you've kind of created a, I, I a think, culture of that. Yeah, I think we, we I, um, as I said, I, I, we don't express the idea whether it's analog or dialogue. I think this is, this is very right. much important. I think that thanks to the dialogue, the, 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 the dialogue, the digital, the, the digital evolution, uh, we have been able as architects to draw more. Right. Significantly yeah, I, more. And more experimentally. And in all kind of different view. ways. Yeah. And, and to me, at the same time, that region regenerated also the need not, but the longing to draw also more analog. Mm -hmm. uh, I think for uh, uh, quite a period, uh, like 50 years ago, almost the architectural drawing was at the end finalizing in plan sections, elevations, plus some representational drawings. Mm -hmm. But this all took in gigantically effort. Uh, but it also was mostly limited that format. Yeah, there were sketchbooks of important architects and so on. If you can see how I think, on one hand, by the digital, uh, in fact, also the analog got a small re-revolution mm. of bringing it back to the table. That's a little bit how I observe it. I, I've seen in many practices, uh, also Mamoyos and yours, but also in teaching Annette Mamoyos, we share this that the amount of drawing seems mm. to be increased gigantically as it is really again seen as the instrument of thinking and not the talk amongst conceptual thinkers and so on mm. and so on. Mm. We draw while we, while we produce. And in that regard, I have a small little experience of yesterday which fascinates me already even when I was biking this way this morning is that yesterday I had the chance to be in a really nice... Uh, teaching studio of Leopold Banchini at the Mendrisio School as a, as a midterm reviewer. And uh, it reminded me to, to your work uh, also, uh, but they were envisioning in uh, Lisbon, uh, I would not say the favelas because that's not the right word, but the, the slums and all the little uh, informal settlements. Uh, it, it was an interesting studio as such to talk about migration and so on. But uh, finally, the thing is that really students got into the spots mm. and uh, made drawings uh, and measurements of all these kind of informal settlements. But then, uh, in the frame of the studio, they made digital drawings of it. And it reminds me to your pet's drawing. Mm -hmm. And I think the digital drawing in your pet drawing was very accurate, uh, as it also to me was accurate towards a society idea of precision and everything and everything. And yesterday there was a fascinating moment, and this is not a judgment or not an evaluation, but also Leopold and the team agreed on it, that um, drawing in digital world, all these little shots and all these things, made another kind of aesthetics out of, in fact, a cruel reality. And mm -hmm. where we concluded today by also saying that there is a problem with the medium mm -hmm. to represent the quality or the informal architecture, in fact, the architecture of no means, the architecture of poverty, mm -hmm. and that the digital was not able to caption it. It could caption it that precise by which it became a kind like of endless conceptual beauty. Mm -hmm. And what I want to say is that to me, still there also drawing to me, interest me in understanding where we still can change limits. And, and I was totally fascinated. I'm, I'm, I don't know how, maybe we should talk, <laughs> how we could find uh, another kind of way of, of depicting realities. Because architectural drawing is, of course, always a little bit, let's say, an upgraded reality, even mm -hmm. if we envision public, if we envision clients, if we envision situations. Uh, but, but how to depict this kind of 
really yeah. things that are yeah, happening yeah. now. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, oh, no, 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 I think uh, yes. Uh, well, just just short. Like, uh, it's, yeah, yeah. Well, Anet tried to also say so to like <laughs> just I follow her uh, uh, forest drawing. So like uh, she said, like exact or uh, no, or how it now so also looks like so that that's also a very important task. And also, like, I think a digital issue, what we did, the pet architecture. So this was also very, take, of course, we can transform to the computer line. So, but uh, it's also, it's a just, uh, other times also the low-tech computer drawing other times. So that's why, so maybe, like, uh, we should really take care almost, uh, not, uh, same as uh, hand drawings, mm -hmm. which element will be effect to the living or like um, moving, so. And and then, so that's why, so maybe pet architecture drawings is uh, we selected all element which is, my well, sliding door is important or like uh, air conditioning is <laughs> important. Mm -hmm. So how we could create the narrative or understanding on the context or some certain situation. So by the drawing. So right, that, it's that, a mode of interpretation. Yeah, not only object, selection. maybe like a more movement. Uh, so that, that part is, uh, I try to always uh, keep it, even if um, my computer, but it also hands support. Mm -hmm. And we are always question to the student, why this line, how this line okay. affects each other. So that may be also the key, not a line, uh, how we keep the line more library or like a living line, mm -hmm. so, so on, so not the just line of the symbol, so, yes, sorry. Annette. Yeah, maybe that's a point, how to look, you said it's difficult to take off the students this uh, hemung, this mm -hmm. barrier between afraid, being afraid of not making beautiful sketches. And I think one point is if you look at sketches, you don't look, is it beautiful or not, but what would you say with this? Because I think even if you take the pen, you have a, a personal, uh, a topic inside what mm -hmm. you see. You mm. you don't see uh, draw what you see, but you draw what you, you see inside and what you want to uh, uh, trans uh, transmit to the others. Mm. And then the focus is a bit more on what is this drawing uh, yeah. saying to us? Not is it nice so, or not? So that's also quite interesting. These are um, because I think you've mentioned maybe two forms of communication. So, um, Momo, you were saying public communication. You know, is this a drawing that my mother could understand? And that's also I think interesting relative to what you were mentioning, Jan, about the traditional conventions of architectural representation. Because the traditional, I mean, a traditional architectural section is not that easy to understand. For someone outside the profession. So in fact, um, being more flexible about those conventions can be a way of communicating to the public. But what I hear you saying, Aneta, is something, I hear it as slightly different, which is also that if I am in the forest and I'm drawing a tree, I'm looking at the tree, but I'm also trying to convey something that I, yep. Myself and noticing maybe it's the bark or maybe it's the shadow that's cast. Yeah, or, you cut drawing in, in thousands of ways. Yeah, and exactly. You have to choose one, right, and right. I think you have also to choose the the mean. If you, it's very different if you take a pencil or a charcoal or whatever. Right. And I think that's also something students could learn. And, and what you said, they, I, I made a very interesting observation. I had the, f uh, the first. Now I have the second year. But first, I had the first year, and on the first day of the studium, they had to draw, uh, to, to sketch uh, Urhütte. <laughs> and the sketches were totally helpless. I was always really shocked about the, uh, yeah, very sad and <laughs> helpless uh, sketches. And then we drew like this, observ observational drawings, mm. and then you can see they, they do it really right. well right and i think one point is that drawing you have really to train like piano player right right because if you really if you domain it then you i think sometimes that the hand is more intelligent maybe than your brain <laughs> or you you can uh, catch uh, catch yes yeah, yeah. uh intuitional right, thoughts right. that not are 
already clear in your mind to to explain, but it's it's I, I it's like, like a yeah, faster right. or more direct uh, medium, and. But the hand is more intelligent than the head. So really I like it you, very much. But this happens if you really are trained extreme. and yeah. don't have... Uh, I mean, I think the musical analogy, or the analogy between drawing and musical training is actually excellent. And, but I, th I think one thing that also was in my head or a background to this interest is that, you know, within art and art schools, there's been a kind of de-skilling Right, so there's a kind of resistance to the notion that um, being an artist is like being a concert musician, and that it requires years of, of training. And so, so to bring, but but the part that maybe uh, at least there could be some agreement on is that you do that that the through the repetition you at least develop facility and can't if it's not. Um, I mean, maybe what. It seems like a conservative position to say, well, you just get better at objectively or, you know, precisely drawing things. But I think what we can say is your hand gets better at conveying whatever it is you want to convey, like, as an instrument of your yeah. own thought. Yeah. And in the same way that writing is. I mean, I think all of, to me, you know, musical practice or um, practice at, at you know, writing whatever kind of prose you want to write or drawing, it's, they're all things that, that's, and I'm sure this is a kind of like thing that any, yeah. you know, neurologist could verify, right? <laughs> that that it's, it's kind of mental pathways as well as physical or neural pathways and physical pathways, yeah. I think also interesting is this difference between uh, observational drawing and what you said a bit on another level, uh, sketches of a genius right right <laughs> and i i was very uh, i i liked the picture you show first when you made the introduction of leonardo da vinci mm -hmm. there it is nearly the same right he draws like a scientist right and like an inventor yeah one of the i didn't even talk about it specifically but one drawing that uh, when i was kind of thinking about um images for the poem and so forth that I was very struck by and I showed as a little one was it's a he's drawing this circulatory system of a person so he's been doing dissections and then there are just these three-dimensional um, sketches of, of rooms on the other side and so you're right there's yeah, they're, I, they're not there's no strict no division. and I think we should put it more together right to to uh, blur a bit this border and finally it's the border between art and science Right, which I also think it, it's a, it would be good to, yeah, to. Well, in architecture, it's a historical separation. Yeah. But nowadays, I don't know if it's no. still so. It does, uh, it's it, not so useful. Yeah, I think it's, it's not, not so useful. useful that I, I think it's think. inscribed within universities, and that was another kind of motivation for this. Is that I think that. Um, in this course, I was saying to some people last night, in this course that I teach on art of science and science of art, every single student, if they're a chemist, they say, I actually really wanted to be a photographer. And if they're, you know, if they're a photographer, they say, I really dreamed of being a, or, you know, I really, <laughs> really wanted to be, a, you know, a surgeon. And there's always these kinds of things, but our universities kind of, yeah, and it's um, not in useful. a sense, You're push right. them push And I them think apart. Drawing, drawing could be a... a Werkzeug. Yeah, it, to, 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 yeah, to, that it's a, to, something to, that yeah, to both. look about this, uh, this overlapping uh, uh, bereich. Oh, the d divides aren't, aren't useful, but I also agree with you, Jan, that the divides, there's been a lot of dogma about kind of all, you know, the future is all digital and we, you know, everything else is archaic, or there's also a kind of traditionalist discourse about we should only be doing hand drawing. And in fact, my risk as a historian who works on the Renaissance is to be perceived, who also believes that, you know, that, that students should be drawing, is that to be perceived as someone who's trying to revive the kind of grand tour and Prix de Rome and <laughs> stuff like that, which I'm really not. Um, but, but there, I think all of that comes from a not useful division between these things. Um, to me, I, I see also in the digital evolution, which is something that as such, as an instrument, 
evolu evolves gigantically. And yeah. to me, I didn't saw yet too much, let's say, how people could appropriate it themselves. Everyone was learning, and each year there was a new update and a new system and a year and that. And, and, and for a long time in the digital evolution, it was like following up the new chances that were there and exploring them. And then I was still like a little bit away, like who's going to be able to take it over again, mm. knowing it that well, being so skilled in it, being mm. so genius in it, that all of a sudden you could turn it into another use of it. And, and recently I started to, to, ex to, to, to meet or to see people who, for example, have all the knowledge and the digital capacity, mm. for example, which you can render, but they don't render with it, and they go totally another direction with mm -hmm. it. And I believe that there is a new era of, of digitalization or, or outcome of the digitalization of which I say, and now it also seems to come there, this feeling of the arm and right, the hand right. again. And I, I have some examples in, in my mind, but maybe let's go no deeper in. But this is now really, for me, very fascinating. Mm. That also at that level, there seems to become an appropriation that becomes back to the body. And not the body that enters into a technical world to mm. try to find all kind of unbelievable, unbelievable things, mm. but not yet having it appropriated in the fingers. And, and there are some evolutions that are very interesting. I, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's evolved incredibly. Mm. And, there it, and um, I think that's one, and there are exciting things happening. And I think mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons. I mean, I went around at ETH, maybe we'll visit the robotics lab, but I you know, walked around there. And to me, it reminds me of you know, Michelangelo's clay models. Like, it feels like that level of experimentation. So there's definitely interesting things happening in that realm. I want to leave um, open the floor if there are um, questions or a few of my students here. Um, unfortunately, our architecture guests are um, going to go teach for the rest of the day. <laughs> and so the, the chance for colleagues and others to ask um, questions is now. Are there questions from the? Yeah, thanks, Pascal. Oh, yes, we have this nice it's, little. Um, hello, hello. <laughs> It's not really um, a question, it's more an observation that, um, you know, you said, uh, what does architecture, what place does architecture have uh, in this um, uh, lecture um, sessions? And uh, I think drawing, is, it's become clear um, that drawing is a sort of a bridge between all the different disciplines, like um, whether you're a sculptor or a painter or an architect or a writer um, or a filmmaker, everybody draws to, to sort of um, visualize their concepts. And um, I think that's what links us all together, you know. So I think it's very important to observational drawings um, of the, the natural world. And just to introduce, this is uh, uh, Pascal Pollier who did uh, the beautiful eye on the oh, poster. Great. So she's a scientific- uh, And a good um, drawer. <laughs> a, a fantastic uh, um, artist and scientific illustrator. Uh, thank you. Maybe Pascal. I can add something. Yeah, I, I read an article which for me was very revealing. For me, it was always clear. Artists and uh, the, the scientists, the, the, there is no, uh, you know, it's, it's such a different approach. And then I read an article of Gottfried Schatz who, who wrote about these drawings uh, scientists made on models to, to show how a cell is or how a atom or whatever. And, it, and he made the, the, the Vergleich, uh, compare. compared it to a Picasso or whatever, not a piece of art. And I said, he's so stupid, he's so <laughs> wrong. That's really, that can't be the same. You are not an artist if you, if you draw a... a a model of an atom. But then I thought, no, he's right. Because if you draw something in the science, you also have to choose, you have to, very different ways to show it, what do you show and which, which, with which means. And of course, it's not the same, but it, I, for me, that was really revealing to think, no, it's not so, it's not so far away. Yeah, yeah. Also modeling, it's the same. Mm. 
And I think this, this uh, switch and transformation of what you see, what you understand, it's, it's not as far away. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, say what you understand what you see. Yeah. <coughs> uh, other questions or comments? Yeah, Thea. <coughs> and this is uh, Thea Lobo, who is a philosopher. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so I love this idea that um, drawing is a way of seeing and a way of knowing and thinking through things. And in philosophy, there's this long tradition of saying that perception has an active component. It's not just being receptive to the world. It's also actively picking out aspects <coughs> of the world. So like, for instance, Immanuel Kant says, if you want to understand what is a line, you have to draw it. And the same is true with many other, like more complex geometrical concepts. To understand them, you have to construct the object. Um, so um, I was wondering if you could say a little bit more explicitly what it is you you're trying, you're under, try, seeking to understand in your practice. I realize, of course, you're not seeking to understand theor theoretical ideas, but there's also use value, of course, in what you're doing. But I would just like to hear a little bit more explicitly, like kind of what is the object of understanding uh, when you draw? Well, when you, so when you draw kind of the world in that sense of percept, so I'm just going to pick up on that point because it's something I've thought about, about perception as active, right? Yeah. So, and I, it's a super interesting concept that you don't just kind of sit and take things in, but as you see, you are contributing to them and so forth. And I mean, maybe I, I, I thought of a question somewhat related to Jan, and it relates to something that you were saying, Annette, about um, you know, an, a drawing that's an. In, I made this distinction between an, a drawing that's an inventing a design and a drawing that's observing the world. But I saw in your notebooks, it feels like there's a kind of you're maybe drawing your dirty dishes in your kitchen, or you may be kind of you know drawing a sketch for a competition design, and they it looks like they're kind of. Um, Mixed up. Yeah, they're in some kind of dialogue with each other. So you're, so maybe, I don't know if this is quite, this is, isn't quite the same question, but I mean, my question would be kind of what's the relation with, between those. Your question is what's the, what's the object? What are, or what are, what yeah, is the, maybe, what are you driving okay, towards? Or, do you understand? Maybe both yeah. question a little bit similar. So yeah, what yeah. architects see right, as a right. object? Right, that's a nice way of putting or, it. Uh, observation. So yeah. that's the point, I think. And then maybe it's Jan and me and Annette is basically we are three different persons. That's yeah, maybe course. slightly is a different. Of but uh, I think architecture always has a gravity. Sim my, my case is a very simple: is a gravity and also environment. Mm -hmm. And the object and the gravity and the environment, including the climate, the human. I'm a human, so it's uh, use it, everything. Um, how object relate to this kind of everything? So to, to as um, certain uh, create uh, in um, space or you know certain in uh, create some territory also around the boundaries or around the body. So that that uh, maybe like a, for my case, of course, simply maybe like a, ah, where is a post and where is a beam? and how roof goes, and how water collect, or how sunlight comes, how the wall were punched of the, uh, yes, uh, punched as a window, and how we can window to open, and how people sitting around windows. So all things is uh, we were trained to as an understanding, so as a relational condition. So that, that, that may be like a, of course, we live in the, our world, so that's why. So, and then you, everybody use architecture. So, of course, everybody knows what it is. But maybe like we trained how each element was composed as an entire environment. And also nowadays, maybe this inspiration is, should be more large because. Uh, uh, not, you know, uh, yeah, for example, global um, uh, earth, uh, like uh, environmental crisis, or like a lot of, we need to take care of more large, large environment so as a component of the uh, 
target of the design. So that's, that maybe we should train um, more than, than I think before. But uh, Leonardo da Vinci, he, he's great. I think he had already a lot of uh, <laughs> uh, like, like uh, imagination and also the understanding of the network of uh, the Network things. is a good yes. word, yeah. I think imagination don't come out of nothing. You have to be trained to see and to look. Uh, carefully at things, and then you, yeah, it, it's not something that comes out of the blank. And I think the the, the footer <laughs> uh, to make also inventory drawings is the is the observation and mm -hmm. observational drawings, because you have to have your uh, souls filled up with. So the, that's I think. Therefore, the observational drawing and, and the invention sketches for design are, are very close because the one serves what you have done in the other mm. field. Do, I, do you I, have any uh, responses? Yeah. Any? Uh, okay, let's see. Any other um, questions? I think we might... Um, I need to let our speakers go attend to their students, and so we have a coffee break now. Um, and please join me in thanking our, our three um, 